The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. Good evening and you're joining with us on a special presentation tonight and we are currently at the premises of One Golf Face and we are here to discuss on a sector that I would say has been majorly affected by the pandemic so far in our country and that's the tourism sector. So today there's this tourism expo which is happening here at One Golf Face and where individuals can come here and expose themselves and learn a lot more about tourism and about what our country can offer. So with that I would like to introduce our two very guests who is Indika Gonavala who is the center manager of One Golf Face and Professor D.A.C. Suranga Silva from the University of Colombo. Thank you sir, for joining us on this program. So to start off this uh, show, I would really like to take your intake about where Sri Lanka stands right now in the tourism industry and what, how severely were we affected by the pandemic? So should I? Yes, yes sir. So it is very obvious fact that uh, Sri Lanka tourism is uh, severely pan uh, hampered from the pan global pandemic. So it is not only for Sri Lanka tourism, the whole tourism industry in the world has been affected. I think this is a hard hit industry from the pandemic. So it is right now, Sri Lanka is opening their borders and expecting the number of tourists come to Sri Lanka. Other countries also open right now. They are country for their own tourism development with the expectation of industry will uh, bring the prosperity of, the, of their country. It is same for Sri Lanka as well. Uh, Sri Lanka has been doing very well after finishing the civil war, uh, but uh, 2018 is the prosperous year for us. We got uh, 2.13 million tourists, and it is almost uh, 4 billion, exceed the 4 billions of US dollar income generated by the tourism industry. We had a very good time, uh, 400, uh, around 500,000 people were employed. If you look at the 500 people who are employed, it means that at least one family, two members, it should be exceed average 2 million to 2.5 million people were uh, having their livelihood uh, income from this to Sri Lanka tourism. But we realized that uh, before pandemic as well, Easter Sunday attack, the industry was severely shocked uh, from the Easter Sunday attack which never expected at that time we were recognized as the best destination to visit in the world by the Lonely Planet. But unfortunately, when we are requiring fast, when we had a very huge expectation on Sri Lanka tourism, we lost the pinnacle and the momentum because of this pandemic. Pandemic has uh, attacked to the very important fundamental, that is movement. Movement is tough when there is no tourism. So, but right now, uh, we have a very huge expectations. Sri Lanka tourism will take the take back or rekindling back their positions and make Sri Lankan's prosperity and sustainability very well. Right, sir. So now, as you said, the pandemic was severely affecting the tourism industry. Have we ever experienced something severe as this? And do you think that we have another stepping forward to go ahead post pandemic? Yeah, but the first question is uh, very, very simple to answer that uh, this is the ever incident Sri Lanka tourism had to face from six, 1967. We started tourism. At that time, no competition in the region for Sri Lanka tourism. Even Maldives was opened in uh, 1980s, at the end of 1980s, but we were the only country open <coughs> tourism industry in the region. So we had a great potential and uh, without competitors, we, we, actually, we, had, we actually grow very fast. Uh, but unfortunately, industry, other countries, when they are opening, uh, we started to face the competitions. But Sri Lanka, by inherent, uh, we have all everything inside. So that is why we call that so much in so little. Uh, but uh, after the pandemic, Sri Lanka has to face uh, very important and very critical uh, challenges. For that one, post-COVID tourism development, 
There is no doubt about that. Sri Lanka tourism will be coming back very soon if the necessities are arranged, arranged well. Uh, therefore, recovery of Sri Lanka tourism is imminent and uh, most probably it is coming soon, provided that we must ensure the insight setting properly. In that case, the very important factor is hospitality. Hospitality is uh, in by health security. So if the country cannot ensure that health security or health safety in Sri Lanka, that will be a uh, challenging task. So therefore, there is a statement called that vaccination to destinations. If you have a vaccination properly, so destination is there. So now government has, to, has been doing this vaccination, but a lot of waves are coming. So now we see now in Netherlands, where I stayed for years, now it is almost uh, locked down. And the vaccination destination and the purpose of tourists has been changed right now. The, the <coughs> entertainment to enlightenment. They want to see the culture, they want to be safe, they want to get some experience. So in that case, if you really want to promote Sri Lanka tourism, we have to ensure several facts. One thing is, now a lot of employees have been actually left the industry. Most of them have gone to the outside of the country. And the infrastructure development of the hotel inside, or hotels or other sectors, have been right now uh, standstill. So uh, fortunate, uh, the fortunate thing is now everybody has hopes, okay, tourism will come. The important thing is not like other industries. This was the hard, hard hit industry, but this is the most important industry to generate the foreign exchange journey. So we are, we are lacking actually. So it's the a, it's a third highest foreign exchange journey of the, of the country. So we have to ensure that. This is a fast, we can say fast cash cow industry. So therefore, foreign currency wise, if you cannot ensure that tourism industry is not growing, so we will be having a severe, severe, uh, unbearable, sometimes irreversible impact of. Uh, Something, Professor, I think you mentioned a lot of important points. Something that I actually caught on was you mentioned that Sri Lanka didn't have a proper competition uh, years before, ages, yes. but now we do. Mm -hmm. Do you think Sri Lanka has a chance of competing against other countries right now? Yes. Because the, the tourism industry is a very interesting industry. You can't uh, substitute Sigiri to another country. So we have a, I, we have a very attractive uh, attractions which are not available other countries. Uh, even though we consider that other countries are competitive, I don't believe that other countries are competitive for Sri Lanka. Why? Because Sri Lanka has very special uh, product. Other countries have their special product. Sometimes other countries can provide the tourists. So-called competitive countries can provide the tourists to Sri Lanka. Now, example, <coughs> you know that Maldives is developing very fast. Recently, we have seen that they have exceeded 100,000 tourists per month, and but still we are struggling for 20,000 per month. Uh, but uh, thing is, those tourists come to in Maldives, come to India, come to Bhutan, come to Indonesia. Uh, they cannot see special things what we have now, example. We, we have no doubt about the beautiful beaches in Maldives, but they don't have wildlife. They don't have diversified culture. So therefore, we must consider the growing country nearby as not a competitive destination, as a complementary destination. If we can promote Sri Lanka tourism in Maldives, that would be the most uh, cost-effective method to attract the tourists to Sri Lanka. So therefore, competition is uh, uh, the traditional world we are using, but we, I believe that the cooperation is very important. Competing together by having the cooperation together. So cooperation is a good concept to be applied uh, among the competitive countries, so-called, and then we can have a synergy effect. So, so Professor, that is very important. Yes. Do you think that we have the right marketing strategies to promote our country and the values that we have right that now? That is where we are lacking, actually. The prosperity and the sustainability of the tourism industry can be ensured only through the effective marketing, uh, then the innovative management and the responsible leadership 
and the empowered employment. And Hoskes relationship must be euphoric. So unfortunately, Sri Lanka has not yet done the super marketing to market Sri Lanka brand Sri Lanka. Sometimes we are using always different brand names, so Sri Lanka and paradise in the world. We, that's continuous change. The sudden changes of the nation brand in also troublemaking. Now example, when you look at Indu, India, incredible India, as everybody knows, that is incredible definitely. I have been there. So but the poverty is there, but they they are selling their poverty also for tourism attractions. For example, Kerala is promoting the monsoon tourism for honeymoon couples. So look at monsoon tourism for honeymoon couples. So, but we are, we are lacking is we have not done the right marketing, focusing our specific product, uh, which are very, very important. Now, example, when you want to market Sri Lanka Buddhism, our culture, our Ceylon tea, Ceylon Sapphire, Ceylon Cinnamons. There are very well-recognized brands. But actually, right now, the government is doing organic product, agro-tourism with organic cons uh, consumptions and their wellness. Now, actually, this budget is explaining that the senior tourism and wellness tourism, that's the perfect right thing. But are we ready to market that one? Whether we have done a right marketing is a questionable. So if you are telling that Helaveda Kama, Helaveda Kama is not known by anywhere. But if you talk about the Ayurveda, Sri Lanka and India is the most prominent countries. So therefore, what we are doing right this conference, this, this mega event is a brand new concept we have developed together, uh, Sri Lanka Tourism Expo. We thought that why Dubai can do their tourism expo, what Sri Lanka Tourism Expo should be a brand. So we together decided I'm very, very thankful to uh, Sangil organizations. This is an international organization, one of the world's best brand. So they have given the opportunity to the University of Colombo to combine together. Uh, knowledge is very important. The, if you really want to ensure the prosperity and the sustainability of the industry, the most important things we should understand that knowledge innovations. Knowledge innovation must be driven by the knowledge. So where this organization has recognized the value of that. So they requested us, last year actually this discussion happened, Mr. Indika might explain this one. We had a very interesting event that is tea culinary competitions. The first time happened in Sri Lanka. So I have been to many countries, we have realized that uh, tea has been, everybody is talking about Sri Lanka. When I said to them, okay, I am from Sri Lanka, they are asking, is it part of India? Then I'm telling, no, no, it's not a part of India. We are an independent country, beautiful country. We are the country producing Ceylon tea. Yes, we like it very much. So then I realized that Ceylon tea itself has given a great brand for Sri Lanka tools and develop. Then we decided to have a culinary event. Look, if you have a wine culinary event, if you have other culinary event, why we can't develop the Ceylon tea culinary event? So actually at that time, uh, Sangil and uh, Mr. Indika was the most important pioneer. Then we had a very good discussion at that time. Uh, the Sangil uh, organizations uh, request us, okay, this year we will have to support, we will be together. So I think that uh, Sri Lanka Tourism Expo would be growing by next year. We have a plan to invite foreign travel agencies and hoteliers if we have been given right uh, assistance and uh, uh, support from relevant organizations. I think you all are on the right path at the moment, but we'll have to go into a small break. After that, we I would like to get Mr. Indika's idea about this whole Tourism Expo event. You're watching a special presentation. Let's go into a short break. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to our special presentation and we are discussing about Tourism Expo Sri Lanka and in the first segment I think Professor Suranga explained 
uh, where Sri Lanka is right now at the moment in the tourism industry while we have been affected by the COVID pandemic. And after that, I would like to take Mr. Indika's idea about Tourism Expo. Now, Tourism Expo has been happening from the 15th of November and few days have already passed and there have been several events that have been taking place also. And today, I believe there was a culinary, uh, sorry, a culinary um, competition as well. So why don't you give us an idea about how this Expo Tourism came into effect and what was the initiative behind this? Okay. First of all, thank you very much uh, uh, for Derana to give this opportunity for us. So uh, this uh, concept or these events of uh, this process we had started seven years back. So uh, when I was a student at University of Colombo, I started my postgraduate there. So then we did the first event in 2014 at uh, uh, Heritage Hungala. So from there to celebrate uh, the tourism day, uh, every year we celebrate uh, on 27th of September. Where we have started from there that actually for the last seven years we have done a uh, few events, uh, several events, but we, we, uh, we focused on uh, for knowledge sharing because as a university uh, we did knowledge sharing part. So uh, at the moment we are running on a tourism leaders summit every year and we did it on this year also 27th of September. Then, uh, then the research conference. So happening on every year in October. So that for last seven years, it's happening every year. So from there, that actually we want to uh, go into a different level that actually go into what we are uh, preaching or what we are learning. We want to make it happen. So this is the event that we are lo looking about. Uh, everybody talking these days about Dubai Expo. So why Sri Lanka can go into a different uh, level or we can make that happen in Sri Lanka also. So that's why from this year onwards, uh, we want to make this uh, Sri Lanka Tourism Expo starting in this year at one golf phase. So uh, when it comes to one golf phase, uh, this is uh, the first inter internationally built and managed uh, mixed development in Sri Lanka. So as the first development, international development, we thought to be the partner uh, with the uh, University of Colombo and make this uh, happen for this year and continue to do it in years to come. So in this year, we started a uh, uh, tourism expo on last Monday. So already five days are over. Uh, so first four days we had a uh, uh, travel show. That means we had uh, around 50 stakeholders who came in and participated for, from the hotels, from the travel agencies, from the services. So it's, it's a overall uh, participation for, from all the stakeholders. And uh, there were a lot of people uh, came per day. Uh, we were touching on a weekday. It's around 18 to 20,000 people coming and they participated. They checked uh, what are the available. So this uh, travel expo happened for last four days up to Thursday. So uh, every evening, uh, uh, 6.30 to 8 p.m., we had a uh, uh, discussion forum in the same location uh, we had it. So uh, that what, what is the way forward of Sri Lanka tourism after pandemic? I think Professor explained in the first segment that we had to face a lot of challenges for the last three years. So some people now, the people who work now, he was talking about half a million people are working in tourism industry. So currently we don't know how many are remaining to carry forward or take this forward after pandemic. That's the huge challenge. So how we face for the challenge, so we actually discussed uh, four areas uh, on how we can uh, take this forward, uh, this tourism. So first day we uh, uh, discuss about survival, recover and resilience of uh, post-pandemic and in the tourism industry. So on Tuesday, uh, we discuss about innovative business development in crisis. So how we can, uh, in the crisis, how we can make this uh, business innovative. Then uh, on Wednesday, we had uh, inclusive and integrated tourism. So for everybody as a whole, how we can uh, take it forward this tourism. 
uh, and on yesterday that was uh, the yesterday we had uh, connectivity and competitiveness so we are the way forward that actually we have to be i think you put a question so how what is the competitiveness is there a uh, is there a challenge on the competitiveness when it comes but now actually we have to be uh, work together and take the industry forward because competition we have to take much positive rather than negative so then today onwards uh, uh, we have a culinary show the culinary competition uh, now it's happening at the moment so uh, today we uh, we had we started in the morning at 10 o'clock is a live cooking competition so uh, last year as uh, professor explained we focus on tea based uh, culinary three course menu this time we a uh, little bit uh, way so actually this time what we did we change uh, into seafood where the the country that actually overall is surrounded by the sea so this live cooking we uh, focus on the seafood competition uh, and it's happened today uh, throughout and the last segment is happening now so then uh, tomorrow and day after again uh, we do have uh, another two, uh, the culinary competition is uh, going so everybody can come and see uh, at uh, one golf face so in the morning uh, uh, the full day we have a cake structure uh, competition where other, uh, there are few people have already uh, already registered and participated so you can see some uh, cake structures and uh, uh, in our mall and also uh, we are having a cake decoration so uh, these two uh, uh, competition uh, we have open for everyone because uh, now during the pandemic actually most of the people as a self employment in social media you are seeing a lot of cakes or structures they were doing at home and selling as a self employment so this uh, two competition we open for everyone and uh, actually uh, there were a lot of participation for that and today uh, tomorrow you can see this uh, cake competition cake decoration competition is happening uh, at uh, one golf is small and also in the same location what we are in uh, so tomorrow we are uh, you can see uh, you can uh, you will be able to see the see the mocktail competition so this time the tea that actually we moved into the mocktail so last time we had it on for live cooking so tea this time we moved into tea mocktail so uh, this time we want to make it because we can't do it, uh, we have to be innovative so the people can come and tea mocktail can be have so see how you can enjoy a different tea or tea uh, taste through mocktail uh, so it's happening to uh, tomorrow and day after on the same location here at level 4 then uh, on last day uh, we do have a cocktail competition so flaring cocktail competition where the people uh, get uh, that the talent can show from there so it's a cocktail competition uh, for one day that's on sunday so uh, so we do have five competition happening uh, this year so three for professionals that means the live cooking cocktail and mocktail then two for open for everyone like cake decoration and cake structure open for everyone so it's a competition so people can uh, participate that actually get their uh, talent show with the industry grows with the talent I right, admit Mr. Indika now I want to discuss about these discussion forums that you all have been having for the past few days what was your target audience and who do you think benefited the most from these programs so this basically uh, this uh, this dis discussion forums uh, focus on mainly the industry uh, the people who are in the industry people who who, who are in the universities who are learning about tourism and all the stakeholders who are interested in tourism because uh, this uh, we had lot of uh, this all uh, top uh, uh, people uh, from the industry came here and shared their experience because last three years everybody has to survive so how we survived and how we need to uh, uh, recover uh, in in uh, this year or at least uh, next year from there how we can take this forward uh, into years to come because this industry where we were in 2018 or 19 and and been the best uh, travel destination in the world in uh, uh what do you call this uh, lonely planet so uh, so we want to get the same uh, level or beyond that so how we are uh, we can get into that level that's what we have discussed during past 
four days. So every everything every uh, it's on recorded uh, format. You can see on our Facebook page, Sri Lanka Tourism Expo. So you will be able to watch and learn more on that. How was the response you received so far from guests and your customers and the people who participated? Uh, did you expect this amount of people or did you expect more or were you satisfied with the amount uh, of participants? Yes, exactly. So because uh, the people here that actually we got around uh, uh, because the capacity is around 175 to 100 people. So we can't go beyond because of the social distancing. From there that uh, what we did uh, through the live, we did live streaming through our Facebook channel. So we got a lot of participation from there. For the travel show also, we expected uh, actually less crowd with the pandemic, but it became especially yesterday as uh, being a poor day. So uh, we were touching around 30 to 35,000 crowd to in the mall. So that actually it's a quite good impact and good, very good motivation to the industry that uh, to do it in next year and with the partnership with the uh, ministry, uh, ministry of Tourism and I want to make this event as an annual national event where we can take it forward to other countries or to the international level. Right, so I believe this is like a stepping stone for a future greater plan. Exactly. All right. So this Tourism Expo, I believe it was a public and private partnership and it was formed recently. Was it so yes, or <laughs> was it a long... Um, long-term plan? Uh, actually, I had this uh, vision a uh, few years back, but the thing is uh, we want to have a place and we need to have a proper timing to do it. Apparently, because of the pandemic, uh, uh, we were unable to uh, come up with uh, whatever the uh, dream. Uh, so finally, six, uh, six months back, uh, Professor Suranga and the, we have the committee that actually we have the alumni of uh, uh, Sri Lanka, this uh, University of Tourism, uh, University of Colombo Tourism uh, alumni. So with that, we thought that like six months back, we want to do it. Uh, even the the pandemic is there, we we should have a plan, and uh, we will focus on with the tourism day that was on 27 September for two weeks. So to have this for two weeks with a food festival. So from there, that actually then it was locked down. Then we postponed to 25th. To 31st of October, make it one week because of the current condition we can't have open uh, food festivals and all. So we cut down that part. So we made, uh, actually we planned for one week. So that also then we have limited restrictions that, I could actually, that it was not eased properly. So then uh, gatherings cannot happen. So we thought of again we had to postpone to 15th November to 21st November. So where we are here now. So today is uh, 19th on the fifth day of uh, the event. Uh, so, uh, so now we are here. So we want to make this in, in next year. It should be around two weeks with a food festival open for uh, all the international crowd to come in. And it's going to, you know, hopefully it will be a bigger event than this. All right, thank you for that answer and I believe that there were a lot of insights discussed and there's more to be discussed. But before that, we'll go into a short break. We'll be back soon. You're watching the special presentation. Welcome back to our special presentation. We are in discussion with Indika Gonavala, who is the Centre Manager of One Golfers, and Professor Suranga Sivahu from the University of Colombo. I think, Mr. Indika, you gave a very vast uh, description about what Tourism Expo is all about and what you all have been offering the past few days. Professor, uh, something which you mentioned in the first segment was about entertainment and how it plays a vital role in order to attract tourists into our country. So right now, do you think Sri Lanka has a stance in the entertainment side? As, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, very specifically the Alumina Association of Tourism, Economics and Hospital Management uh, that is actually doing this, all these activities. We always believe that uh, industry interactive and application-oriented learning approach. Uh, as you said, that uh, one of the lacking area, according to, according to the global travel and tourism competitive index, we are very low level actually, far, far low level 
I think our, our so-called compared to countries uh, are much more better than us. Nearby India also very good and Sri Lanka is, uh, though Sri Lanka has land like no other, we have been telling this one, the competitiveness, when you look at the competitiveness, Sri Lanka must look at that one and develop very much. We have to do a lot of effort. So uh, in that case, entertainment is a big, uh, big, very important area. So example now, uh, rainy day like these days, what tourists should do is questionable. So then we have to create more ac activities. Activities ultimately convert as uh, memories, experience. So those experience must ensure that outstanding experience, memorable experience. So that part is lacking actually. So uh, entertainment, even entertainment after 9 OK, Colombo is closed. So no country can develop their tourism if, not, if there's no light, nightlife. So there are several uh, barriers culturally we have been given. Now example, 95% of Buddhists in Thailand, they have a good nightlife, but I'm not taking, talking about uh, unethical things, but nightlife is not just having the, some sort of uh, socially responsible activities, but there are many activities. Now look at in front of a gold face, it is vacant. There's no activities. So uh, that part is very lacking. So that is also, I think, uh, do research and find out how we can do uh, different activities. The knowledge can be uh, enhanced through the research knowledge. That is, we call the evidence-based research. So what we lack in is, industry has not yet recognized the research is very important part of the tourism development. Education is very important part of tourism development. So I think that entertainment enhancement must be done. There is no doubt that one. Even the, if you are going to do a similar type of entertainment but other countries are offering, no, that is also a problem. Sameness, homogeneous nature will create the competitive flow, right? We have to find out the very active, very, very, very memorable, experience-driven activities based on the attractions. Attractions are available in Sri Lanka. We have been so telling that always, Sri Lanka has a great potential. It's a beautiful country, great potential. For what? The potential should not be kept as a potential forever. We have to capitalize it. Capitalizing is we have to generate the activities. Activities must generate the new experience for tourists. New experience must be memorable. And they, they, could, they, they are going back to their country. They can't take product here. They will take the experience what they have been given here. So that part to be connected to each other. Uh, the, another thing is I would like to highlight that is we should not undermine the sustainable tools and development. Sustainability is a very important concept. It has, although though it has become a bandwagon as buzzword, it has a very good meaning. So we have to find out how we can ensure the sustainable tourism development practices in Sri Lanka. For that one, we are doing a lot of research. Now we have seen that uh, Sri Lanka is to be promoted as a authentic and unique tourism activities. What type of unique experience we tourists can get from Sri Lanka must be examined. And must be examined or is not enough. It's good but not good enough. We have to create the activities. So we have been uh, trying to do these days. Sri Lanka is a very popular country for tea tourism. But you know that uh, it is only having a cup of tea in a tea plantation. Yes, right? it's a very so limited crowd. Limited. So it had to be uh, create a lot of activities. At the same time, village tourism, Buddhist tourism. Now, actually, these days, what we are doing is we are trying to go to the, uh, our, uh, the ancient temples, and uh, they are promoting different tourism activities, but they, are, they have lack of experience and knowledge and uh, uh, to manage how tourists, right? So the, we call that spiritual tourism management part is less. They, when they go, they are putting the ticket in front of the gate, and getting the money, but that is not the cultural or Buddhist tourism or something. It should be more than that. So therefore, the creativeness must be there. Uh, creativeness create the experience, novel experience, and novel experience will collect the memories. When, when they go back to their country, they will tell that, they will remind it, and they will, they will do the uh, word of mouth recommendations. And they will create the uh, persistent, uh, of tourist arrivals, right? So 
so revisit of tourists. Now, when we look at Sri Lanka, it's very low, insignificant level of revisit of tourists. If tourists are coming to Sri Lanka again, not because of the large scale hotels operation and uh, experience, but because, but because how much they connect with the local culture, local community, that will be the, one of the key reasons to revisit to Sri Lanka. Yeah, that's so, true. Example is uh, if, you, if you can promote uh, bedding tourism, honeymoon tourism, then anniversaries are here right now. Right? So we have to be very creative. We have to be very innovative. That part is lacking right now. That's the big issue. I also would like to take Mr. Indika's idea also now. Entertainment, as you said, it's very crucial. And the majority of the tourism are looking for entertainment, as you said. But why do you think Sri Lanka is lacking with this initiative? What is stopping them right now? Okay, uh, in, in that side, that actually that's why uh, the innovativeness, that actually uh, this uh, mall concept, it's new to Sri Lanka now. So we, because a uh, few years back, we had few shopping malls coming in, but when it comes to internationally, uh, international level, uh, with the Colombo City Centre comes in, then after we, one golf phase comes in. So from there, that uh, this, uh, the mall concept uh, changed uh, the Colombo City in a different level. So in future, there are a few more to come in. So from there, that actually from this, in, when it comes to shopping mall uh, as a destination, so we have a lot of entertainment. We come to cinema, to uh, we have we do have 55 FNB uh, outlets where that actually you have more uh, variety to come and enjoy. So then a lot of activities automatically you create in this area, and also uh, it's there's no nightlife. That actually nightlife is very lacking. So uh, in future there will be some more uh, brands coming in. So. So the issue is uh, the foreign brands that are actually well-known well brands need to come into Sri Lanka, get this uh, event so uh, the nightlife uh, make it happen. So uh, we do have hard rock to come in in, uh, in uh, near future. So when that actually the entire Colombo will change, the nightlife might change with that uh, uh, restaurant or that concept comes in. So you need to change the concept. Now this mall operates until 10 p.m. But if you see after 8 p.m., it's very uh, less crowd coming in. But now from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that number has increased. So first, what you, what you want to do, you have to show that we are there. So sometimes we have to explain the tenants, you should open until 10. But it's very tough uh, when it comes that actually because the mindset need to change. And then from there onwards that actually the people know that this place is open. So then that the nightlife slowly, slowly started. So uh, as uh, what Professor mentioned, when the tourist comes, they don't want to travel in the daytime because of the traffic, the sun, it's very tough to run. Even if you go to other country like Thailand or Singapore, wherever you go, so then what you do, you do, do your traveling part or you do you like to travel in the evenings or nights, where yeah, directly you have the, uh, uh, the transportation, the accessibility, everything is there. And also the entire the city is on throughout the night. So what I think that actually night tourism should be there. And uh, at the moment where we are in, in, in more or less rather than the tourism industry, still Sri Lanka we promote, it's called the hotel industry. It's not tourism industry. So you want to make this change over uh, to make this happen as a tourism industry driven uh, branding or the marketing should come in and the events and activities should be there. So that's why the Sri Lanka Tourism Expo comes in this year where we want to make in next year that it's an annual event. Everyone knows we should travel for this uh, Sri Lanka Tourism Expo which is happening most probably next year we are targeting on 27th September onwards uh, for two weeks. That's our dates uh, schedule. But what I mentioned earlier, nothing has happened. So uh, as an event, we are the Sri Lanka Tourism, uh, Tourism Bureau and Sri Lanka Tourism uh, Ministry and the Tourist Board get together uh, and drive this uh, public-private partnership to, into a different level. 
Right. No, I think we are running out of time as well. But before we end, I would like to take both of your intakes on. Y'all are expecting to hold Expo internationally. Like right now, Dubai Expo is happening, yes. and you expect the same uh, event to happen here in Sri Lanka. But as you see around the world, there are huge icons, beautiful events, fireworks, and variety of um, entertainment. Uh, sectors which are happening right now in Expo Dubai. Do you think Sri Lanka will ever get to that chance? And also, I believe that there should be a vote. About 160 out of 164 countries, I believe that 119 have voted for the country of Dubai to uh, hold Expo 2020 this year. But do you think Sri Lanka has a chance of winning that vote? Why not? I think uh, if we have a vision, definitely uh, uh, we can achieve it. Because uh, we have the diversity wise. From the other, definitely we will be able to uh, go beyond uh, and uh, go for that dream or the vision. So uh, that we need, that commitment, we need to focus. If we can get together uh, as public, private, with that partnership, if we can get together, definitely we can go into that uh, dream in near future. Because this is a hub when the port city coming in. So we never thought that we, we can be a hub like Singapore, Hong Kong. Now it's developing in front of us. So and that means yes. uh, it's, it will be a great opportunity for uh, Sri Lanka and Colombo in future. We being Sri Lanka should uh, believe that we can do because we have been proven to the world something other countries said that we can't do, but we, we have done it. So therefore, we, if we don't believe that, who is going to believe it as Sri Lankans? The important thing is we are not going to compete Dubai Expo in any other country. We have a unique, very integrated, new concept driven, globalized, but localized as well. Globalized and localized concept to run this Sri Lanka Tourism Expo 2022 with the support of all other stakeholders. But biggest challenge we are facing, not the running this Sri Lanka Tourism Expo, but getting the consolidated, integrated support from all stakeholders is a biggest challenge. But our attitude must be changed. We must go together and maximize the synergy we could get, rather than de developing the different department and different apartment that will be, a, uh, that will be creating the low outcome rather than the going for the potential outcome. Potential outcome is a huge, it is a tip of the iceberg what we have right now. Right, thank you Mr. Indika and Professor Suranga for joining me on this show. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have. And I also believe that all our stakeholders and individuals would get together and rebuild our country as a nation and rebuild our tourism sector as well. Again, thank you very much thank for joining you. my show. So that was the program of our special presentation. I also invite every one of you all out there to join the last few days of this Expo Tourism Sri Lanka and the final day is on Sunday. See you soon. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Have a good night. <laughs>